Shoppers in Blackpool, Ireland were shocked to see an elephant running around a car park on Tuesday. Baby, a 2.5-ton Asian elephant, escaped from a circus outside a busy shopping center. It broke a barrier and galloped about 200 meters to the car park. A coffee shop manager was witness to the spectacle. Elephant actually escaped and it was, <laughs> he was running around by, on his own and then you could see the, the guys from the circus probably, they look after him, running around and he, he, he wasn't, the elephant wasn't happy. I'd say he was scared as well because it was around 4 o'clock so there were a lot, a lot of cars, a lot of people around. Nobody was hurt from the incident and Baby's handler brought him back to the circus saying he would not have harmed anyone. Danger, you can no say danger because we know he don't hit people. All right? That's, you must understand. But the problem may not be completely solved. The handlers say Baby ran away from the circus because he refused to take a shower. Well, after two days, uh, the BRICS summit has uh, just wrapped up now in India, uh, creating an alternative global lender and stepping away from the dollar as a reserve currency all among the main objectives. Uh, in New Delhi is Artie's Priya Shrida. The leaders from the five leading emerging economies in the world, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, are all here in New Delhi for the fourth annual BRICS summit. Uh, Russian President Dmitry Medvedev held a bilateral meeting with the Indian Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. There have been a lot of things on the agenda. One of the main themes of this year's summit is uh, how these growing economic powers are also starting to have more political clout on major international issues like Syria. And again, we saw Russia and China saying that they back a ceasefire in Syria. They want peace in Syria, but they don't expect uh, President Assad to step down. They don't want him to step down, um, like many of the Western leaders have said. Uh, let's take a listen to what the Russian president had to say. One of the priorities for BRICS for the years to come should be the strengthening and key role of the UN Security Council in maintaining international peace and security, and also ensuring that the UN is not used as a cover for regime change and unilateral actions to resolve conflict situations. And that was another thing that all of these five leaders talked about, reforming the United Nations. Another point that everyone was talking about was Iran and how sanctions are not going to work on Iran. These five countries are expected um, in the next eight years to make up 50 percent of the global GDP. Around the country, and again, it's due to government policy. Unlike the pink bat scheme, which was voluntary, the installation of smart meters is compulsory in hundreds of thousands of homes. And now there are real concerns that they can blow a fuse, even explode, and put those homes at risk. Jackie Quist reports on the campaign to get governments to think again about smart meters. A homeowner's nightmare caught on camera. It's newly installed smart meter ablaze. Weatherboards burning, smoke billowing, sparks flying. In minutes, an expensive home is well alight. These things do explode. Encore was doing some work on the electrical meters, swapping over to a smart meter. In the US, these two house fires have added fuel to the burning issue of smart meter safety. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Friday. March 30th, 2012, and I'm Darko. This is the last video. So, just a quick comment on this elephant video, because when I first saw it, I just thought it's just, it kind of represents people. You know, we're, we're like circus animals in the circus, and we just want to get out. For God's sake, you just want to get off, right? And then you realize, eventually, that this is a prison planet, and that you can't leave, and that it's going to be repressive, or oppressive, uh, all around, everywhere, right? So, Usually money will buy you uh, some freedom, but only to a certain extent. But I really don't like the idea of these animals being put in circuses and stuff like that. Uh, it's just such an unnatural environment for them. You know, like they were trying to make him bathe when he didn't want to bathe, and that's why he ran away. Uh, but it's this represents, our, you know, us people. And, it, it, you know, it's kind of – I was interested to see how that woman was going to react to it, and how did she react? She was kind of laughing it off, right? kind of laughing it off. It's like, well, you're a slave too, bitch. You know, excuse my French, but you're a slave too. And it's not funny because you're just in a bigger, you're in a bigger circus show and you're in a bigger cage. The next comment I have to make, 
um, as far as this goes, was 50 percent of the uh, GDP in the BRIC uh, uh, countries. Well, all these countries are all on board with the global government. They would, if they if they weren't, they wouldn't be in those positions. So, the only thing that they're saying is, hey, like Star Trek, you know, I want a piece of the action, right? They just want a piece of their action. So. Uh, you know, and this is all, of course, this isn't something that that a post-Soviet, uh, you know, a communist uh, economic style system has done in, in China. I mean, come on, people. I mean, th this was completely engineered, their economies and stuff like that. Um, you know, the same bankers that funded both sides of the war uh, experimented with, uh, with different uh, styles of, of control. And now we're, you know, you have the West where... Uh, we were f somewhat uh, free market. Uh, now we're moving more towards a, a government uh, steered, controlled economy, more towards communism. I mean, we already have the central banks. We have plenty of of indicators that we're going towards that. And then you have the then you have the East, which started off with the raw communism, moving more towards free market capitalism. So you see, the experiment is we're actually living in the blending of the bolt of of the two. And so these countries. They're, they're, they haven't done anything different. I mean, there's still com there's still uh, countries out there in Eastern Europe, and, and like in the last video that I shown in East Germany, that still have not recovered from what was done to their economies as far as making it communist. So, like I said, it has nothing to do with communists or uh, uh, competition or anything like that. So, smart feeder uh, fire risk. I just thought I'd throw it in there, showing these things a blow up because I'm going to get it into. Uh, uh, climate change and how they're trying to shove this theory and all of the um, protocols down your throat. So, all in the name of saving the planet. Demand for U.S. debt is not limitless, says in 2011 the Fed, Federal Reserve, the private Federal Reserve System purchased a stunning 61% of Treasury issuance and it says that cannot last. Well, no. So it's here and that's why they're getting ready for a new reserve currency for the dollar. Virginia, first state to sell naming rights to roads, having become the first state to sell off the naming rights of its rest stops. Virginia is going one step further by naming roads and bridges after anyone poning up the necessary gas. So in the UK, they're selling off the roads. You have other places selling off their utility companies. So um, we have here, oh yeah, I think they're even selling off some national parks to uh, Matt Tabai. Bank of America is a raging hurricane of theft and fraud. Talks about Bank of America. And uh, it, it kind of goes in line with this other article here talking about their fraud because the date on this was March 27th, 2012. Then March 30th, Bank of America branch manager admits stealing $2 million from customers. Uh, former Texas branch manager accused of stealing more than $2 million from customers' accounts has pleaded guilty. So moving on here, we have Bank of America tests renting foreclosed homes back to homeowners. This is after they've sat on these homes for a while and didn't uh, let them foreclose. It was only because, remember what I said uh, before a while back, that they would have been considered insolvent as if they weren't already. So uh, now they're finally letting those things clear and their books clear out, and now they're going to actually profit from it even further by renting these homes that uh, were initially these people's. So, God, what a scam, dude. And Bank of America, to call it Bank of America with their little... Um, uh, Masonic little stance that they have there in their Masonic red and blue. It's just, it's so un American. But uh, either way, I, who defines it, right? They do. <laughs> no surprise here. Bank of America looks to charge more fees. So uh, it says you might be angry over Bank of America's checking fees, but you shouldn't be surprised. So they're working on sweeping changes that would require many of its users' basic checking accounts to pay monthly fees unless they agree to. Uh, bank online, buy more products, or maintain certain balances. And that's, of course, so they can loan it out uh, 10, 100 times the amount. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you don't see crap for it. So forming a uh, former zoning inspector sentence for taking bribes. And remember, just in the last video, what did I say? I said uh, these zoning inspectors, it was based off an article that I was reporting on, that's what? They're like the mafia. They do shakedowns. They don't give a shit about your safety. So it makes sense that an article will come out just the next day former zoning inspector sentenced for taking bribes then we have every day a new elitist fairy tale now earth hour not i do at earth hour but i will this year's theme for earth hour that happens on saturday at 8 30 it says i will if you will a challenge-based platform that encourages people to go beyond the hour to preserve and protect the planet even as malls government offices and corporations pull the plug on all but essential lights in support of the annual event to raise awareness of 
man-made climate change, never mind the spraying of aerosols by planes, just worry about you uh, trying to stay warm in the winter or pay for overpriced gasoline to get to your shitty job so that you can give one-third of it over to the Federal Reserve System. Says here, climate change skepticism must be treated, says enviro uh, sociologist. Some people will just call him an eco-fascist or even a eugenicist like Bill Gates. So, skepticism regarding the need for immediate and massive action against carbon emissions is a sickness of societies and individuals which need to be, quote, treated according to the organ-based professor of sociology and environmental studies. And, um, yeah, it goes on here. She says she compares the struggle against climate skepticism to that against racism and slavery in the U.S. and South. This, of course, when they disbanded the tribes, uh, killed the indigenous culture, which held it together for thousands of years. And then uh, when people try to go back to that, um, and they're just kind of twisted and distorted, and they don't know where they came from, where they're going, um, and they start lashing out uh, because some of them are ignorant, well, they call it racism. According to an Oregon Uni statement announcing the paper, resistance at individual and societal levels must be recognized and treated as if it's a disease, right? Just like vaccine denial or vaccine, um, what is it, autism affects, uh, you say that's actually a disease and needs to be treated. It says this kind of cultural resistance, oh, and they actually, <laughs> I remember that, that article too, they actually have a pill for racism too. So this kind of cultural resistance to very significant social threat is something that we would expect in any society facing a massive threat. So who makes up this threat, right? Who makes it up? Well, the Club of Rome, global warming, and the environmental elite. So it's here, in searching for a new enemy to unite us, we came up with the idea that pollution, the threat of global warming, water shortages, famine, and the like would fit the bill. All these dangers are caused by human intervention, and it is only through change attitudes and behavior, i.e. mind control, brainwashing, conditioning, that they can be overcome. The real enemy, then, is humanity itself. This is in the first global revolution, page 104. It says here, founder of the Club of Rome and Bertrand Schneider, uh, it says here, secretary of the Club of Rome, which is the elite think tank behind ideas such as sustainable development and global warming like the Rockefeller Brothers Fund. So this is building up because of the Rio 20. They're going to try to pass their carbon tax so they can fund their global government. So effective world government will be needed to stave off climate catastrophe. So no, actually, it's climate, the threat of climate catastrophe, uh, which will produce the tax needed to stop this disaster, this threat, that will then fund the global government. So see, it's just ass backwards, but it's double think, and it makes sense. Is this finally proof we're not causing global warming? The whole of the Earth heated up in medieval times without human CO2 emissions, says new study. Climate funds seek UN-style diplomatic immunity, the Green Climate Fund. That's right, they're going to have a green court and a green tax, a green bank, which is supposed to help mobilize as much as $100 billion a year to global, uh, lower global greenhouse gases as they're spraying aerosols uh, and increasing the greenhouse effect, warming it in the name of cooling it, is, again, doublethink, is seeking a broad blanket of UN-style immunity that would shield its operations from any kind of legal process, including civil and criminal prosecution in the countries where it operates. There's just one problem. It's not part of the United Nations, which is what? It's not even, a, it's not even a anything. It's a private company. But it makes sense because it said it's laid to hold its first meeting on the Green Climate Fund. Oh, in their own private money laundering country known as Switzerland. Moving on here, the same man that uh, compared humans to maggots and how they were in classes, eco-activists or eco-fascist eugenicist David Suzuki, uh, basically has a policy of what? Silence and demonize over what? Climate change says here that on the website, right besides tell the Senate to stop silencing environmental groups, set the piece by Suzuki headline, Climate Change Denial Isn't About Science or Even Skepticism. It was recently published in the Huffington Post under the headline, Deny Deniers the Right to Deny. Moving on to engineer consent, Britain sees race towards euthanasia. Proponents of euthanasia in Britain once again trying to remove the legal safeguards on assisted suicide. And a Canadian report recommends change in euthanasia law to be allowed to help terminally ill patients die. Now just imagine like a big uh, Apple contract, you know, hidden in there. Oh, I'm signing away my right to be euthanized, right? And then they harvest your organs and everything. So with all these crap that the scientists are spewing, it makes uh, sense that trust in science among educated conservatives plunges. So the world's little Babylon cities to expand by more than twice the size of Texas by 2030, but this is all part of the plan, these smart cities, these plantopolis, these megacities.
but so are these death matches live on television. Thank you.